Thank you very much and thanks for having me. Uh, I've been in Canada for like three hours, whole three hours now. <laughs> so it's, it's really nice to, really nice to be here. They're very good so far. Um, <clears throat> and yes, this is the stuff you do on your vacations. Instead, you, in case you wonder, that's, that's what you're supposed to do on your vacations. You go to somewhere and you talk about Java. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, any Java developers in here? Okay, good, good, good. So, you know, just making sure that your hands are working. Uh, use them. Uh, you, uh, whenever, stop me whenever you want and just ask your questions, uh, comments, anything that you might want to add or ask or whatever. Uh, we can do it at any time, really. So just, uh, just, just, just shoot. All right. Um, first, let's do a little uh, quick introduction. So the thing I'm going to be talking about is, um, so how many of you have heard of Java EE? J2EE? Jakarta EE? Yeah, okay, it's at, at least, okay, the good thing here is like it's usually the same hands that's kept on. Uh, what, what, I, what I have seen at some other events, you just say Java E, and then you have like a certain group of the room will go hands up. And then there was like, okay, keep your hands up. And then you do Jakarta E, another part of the room will get their hands up. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. So probably you've guessed it from the screen as well. But um, so what I'm going to be talking about, some of those things are part of... Um, Jakarta E now, but uh, they're not only. There will be some other things that I will talk about. And I want to talk about uh, what you call now a modern app development, Java modern app modernization or cloud native. You can call it many things. It's pretty much we'll end up with similar-ish set of things. Um, <coughs> this slide is just to il illustrate uh, that. It, like I said, it's the same thing, and it's, it's been going on for quite some time. At some point, it was transferred to Eclipse Foundation. It became, it had to change its name uh, because it had a trademark name in it uh, or word in it. It had to be replaced with something else, and then people thought really hard, and they found another word starting on J. Uh, and uh, geographically, not that far-ish from the other one uh, <coughs> on the map. Uh, so. Um, there was a bunch of features coming in. Uh, Jakarta E10 is uh, is still the the latest version. 11 is just around the corner. I think uh, it's still not released. If I'm I'm still in beta vacation mode, uh, I think it's still not released. Um, but yeah, so features been adding, but it kind of brings more stuff to. Uh, to, to play in Java applications and uh, libraries and things like that. Um, the part that's really interesting for us right now is the one that you see uh, in color. So all the, one, all the other ones that are kind of grayed out is it's part of Jakarta E platform, but it's not something that we'll be talking about today. There's a bunch of things like, I don't know, the way talk to mail servers and uh, uh, security and serverless and stuff like that. We're not going to talk about that. We'll, what we'll be talking about is the part of it that is called Jakarta e core profile that you see on the corner there. There's a little bit bigger uh, separation. So they did, they did a very smart thing. So they took the whole thing and then they created uh, packages that contain a sub package and sub package and sub package um, to separate them in a kind of different well, think of it as levels, right? So there is a core profile that does like a very, very basic stuff that you might need for your um, microservices or uh, web cloud native applications. And there are some other things that are part of web profile. And then there is a bigger umbrella for more stuff, right? Another thing that I'll be talking about is uh, something called micro profile. Anyone micro profile? OK, good, a few hands. Uh, <coughs> So what they, they did, it, it, it was weird times. So it was uh, kind of dark ages of Jakarta, Java EE, 
when Jiao Yi was kind of dying and nothing was happening, and then some other people uh, picked up and started doing uh, this called uh, microprofile, and then, uh, then uh, Jakarta Eve came back to life and all that, and then they kind of tried to figure out how to make it work together. So what you see at the bottom there, the little yellow box called Jakarta E10 Core Profile, that's the ones that you saw. That's all the boxes that you see there, right? And then on top of that, they built some other stuff that helps your uh, to you to create more uh, cloud-native friendly applications. You can do all of the things that I'm going to be mentioning or talking about, you can do with other things. There are things like Micronaut, there are things like Spring Boot, there is like a bunch of other things. That's fine. I mean, most of those things that I'm mentioning here, you will be able to find in the other ones as well. Uh, like things like health, things like metrics, fault tolerance, you know, all those kind of things. Um, the things that you see on your right side uh, with the standalone uh, box around it, we're not going to talk about that. That's that separate thing. A lot of cool stuff there. Feel free to enjoy and, 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 and test it and try it and stuff. But it's not uh, going to be a part of uh, this thing this talk. So, I mean, I had to pick five things, and there's so many things to talk about. I mean, each box could be a talk on its own. Um, this is a wall of text, and this is wall of text to show you two things. One, never put them in presentations, because <laughs> I lost half of you already trying to parse that. Uh, the second thing is actually to, there is actually a system to the madness. So, um, the second thing is actually to tell you that all of the things that I'll be mentioning, well, most of the things I'll be mentioning, whatever is Jakarta E or uh, microprofile thing, there are actually specifications. So somebody sat down and wrote it down and created a, a, a textual specification and then it's up to vendors to actually implement that stuff. Like, you know, people like uh, people at IBM, at Red Hat, at uh, Oracle, at, uh, pff, I don't know, uh, what else we have here. Uh, there are a bunch of others, other implementations of all that, all that. And they all implement or reuse some libraries that implement that. <coughs> so it's all specification. That also means that you can actually quickly switch between different runtimes. You can use Quarkus. Uh, Open Liberty, uh, Heliden, whatever. Right. So far, so good, right? So that was the introduction, a very short, long introduction. Um, first thing, so five things, right? So thing number, thing number one, you want to make sure that your modern and cool new application, as opposed to the way we used to do that in the back in the day. So when I started as a developer, 15 something, 18 years ago. Uh, we used to do, you create a jar, you put it on a Tomcat that is running on a VM or actual an actual machine under my table or somewhere in a server room or something. And then you would just deploy a new one, take it down, deploy a new one, and that was it, right? Uh, the way we did fault tolerance was just to go and kick that box and do restart maybe. And that was, that was pretty much it, right? Um, we don't do that kind of stuff anymore. We shouldn't do that kind of stuff anymore. We still do, unfortunately. Uh, but I want to talk about the, you know, um, you need to, and I mean, it, it sounds obvious, right? It's like, you know, obviously you need to think about that. Believe me, <laughs> it sounds obvious. Many people still don't do that. I work on a bunch of projects. I work as a consultant in, 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 in Norway. And I've been doing it for almost, yeah, 18, 19 years now. They still don't do that. There's a lot of companies that create a microservices, nanoservices, micro, my, my, tiny little whatever gremlins. And they still don't, they still freeze up and die if anything goes wrong. Um, so fault tolerance is an important thing. So um, why it's important? Well. Your application might crash, or like services inside your uh, ecosystem might crash, and then the other services that depend on it don't know what to do. Um, you need to, or you might want to sw switch to another solution. So say you have a service, it's not, it's outside your control, 
it gives you information you need, but it's not stable. So you might want to have a use that as much as you can, but when it fails, uh, you want to switch to something more reliable, but still less precise, maybe. I mean, think of a weather service, right? You have a, something really local, but very bad in, in the sense of response time and all that. And sometimes when it fails, you just want to pick something from, I don't know, weather.com or something very, very generic and just pull it and just show at least something. Um, and the other problem is that it has happened quite a lot of times when some services inside uh, people's um, companies' networks go down, they will uh, end up DDoSing themselves or kind of um, sending too many requests to their own services that are being down and then taking down the whole network. It has happened quite a few times. I mean, it's, it's still going to happen if you don't uh, create things like exponential backoffs, retries, and things like that. I mean, I work for um, a place, uh, uh, like a customer, where they, if they don't scale down their Kubernetes cluster, they end up DDoSing themselves. If something goes wrong somewhere on the other side, on the on on, on the outside, so it's it's actually a thing, right? So it's it's really important to think about that. They didn't. So now they actually have to go into Kubernetes and scale it down and scale it gradually up again so they don't DDoS the other thing that dies. Um, yeah, so you want to do that. So the way you do that in uh, MicroProfile is using annotations. So the one of the good things about MicroProfile, if you're used to good old way of doing with Jakarta E with annotations, you're still there. If you hate it, well, bad news for you. You need to try something else. Uh, <clears throat> but um, you'll probably find the similar things in uh, Spring Boot or anything else uh, in one way or another. If it's whether it is annotations for something else, that's that might might vary a bit. But Things like timeouts, right? You to send a request and then you actually force it to die after some. If there is not an, not not if there is no response within a specific um, time limit, retries. How many retries you should do? Uh, fallback. So if it fails, what do I do now? Uh, oh, I can call the other method or something. I'll show you the code and everything in a second. Um, I'll show you. So the deal is, I'll show you. Um, <laughs> dead code, so screenshots first, but I'll show you the, the, the real, real code as well later, because I have real code here, uh, and I can actually show you and run it and everything. We actually even have a uh, bunch of containers running, so it's actually, uh, it's actually a thing. But for now, I'll be showing you a little bit of uh, Oh, that's that's a good idea too. So yeah, um, dark mode screenshots. <laughs> it's very visible, right? <laughs> yes. Um, for those of you who are, who brought your field binoculars, that's probably a good thing. For the other the, the other group, uh, I'll we'll do the live code afterwards with a bit more better, a little bit better color scheme. Uh, but so the cool thing here is that you can you have things like. Um, REST client. So you can basically create uh, a client, REST client, to an for another REST endpoint and just do it, do it by annotation. So uh, what you do it here, it says register REST client, you define a URL to another one, to another endpoint that is outside this piece of code. So think of it as another service. And then you can just uh, use the URLs and all that and then it will be using those so it's going to use those two message uh, endpoints. So it's going to look like localhost 8080 API message, and also same thing with message backup, right? Um, and it just works. The other cool thing, I mean, since we're talking about fault tolerance now, is that you can actually create two endpoints, and you'll say, well, I'm going to do a, a GET request to a message. And if that uh, fails, I want you to use, uh, so my, 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 my uh, interface looks like get that data, right? And if that fails, so my fallback is get that other data. I was really creative with the names. Uh, <coughs> so that, that is here. The implementation of the interfaces we'll see in a second. 
So the question is, I'm going to repeat that for the, for, for the mic. Um, so the question is, if you can do different methods depending on what error do you get. And the, my first guess would be, I don't, I don't know, do you know if it's possible? Uh, so my first guess would be to actually do one method, but inside that method, so you send to, to, to that method a response. Uh, object and actually sort it based on the response because response objects will have a, a HTTP code yeah. uh, and inside that I would actually filter it out and, and, and see what happened. Uh, so what I do here, but that's actually a very good question. Um, yeah, I think I would do that. So you just do it han handle yourself yeah, manually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but so what I do here is that because I needed to create a bit of um, uh, flickering service. So the way the way I did that, I I do that as all geeks do. Uh, I roll a dice, uh, <coughs> and uh, I roll a dice, and if 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 it's divisible by two, so if it is uh, if it's divisible by two, it's everything is good. I return success, true. And if it's not, well, I create a, a error message. So I do a response. Um, uh, server error and also I so basically 500 error right and I say some weird error because I'm very very informative with my error messages as well not only not only my function names but also error messages it's a lot of things I'm showing you what to do but I'm also showing you a lot of things you're not supposed to do so that's one of them uh, so you've seen two things you're not supposed to do wall of text and uh, bad naming of things if I show you off by one errors, we've covered all IT problems, I think, in, 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 in one go. Uh, <coughs> I'll probably do that at some point, uh, non-intentionally. Non uh, <coughs> right, and uh, when that happens, I want, uh, so my, er my, my response code is, if everything goes okay, I send this message, right, the one that is on top here. So it's, uh, it's Jason saying, message, hello there. And if everything goes well, I just re return that message back to the user. If it's not, I will go to this method. So that's my backup implementation, right? Because we had an interface in the previous slide. Uh, this is implementation of that. And then you go a backup hello instead, then you actually know that it's, um, that it is uh, the backup message. Otherwise, you wouldn't see the difference, right? And we're going for a full fun demo thing. Um, I can, do you want me to show you actual thing in action right away, or we can do it at the end? Right away? Yeah, let's do it now. Okay, let's do it now. Uh, nothing can possible, what, what can possibly go wrong doing live demos, right? Um, <laughs> Right, where do we start? Uh, let, okay, let me see. Uh, localhost uh, 42, 42. Um, uh, so you're, you haven't seen that yet because I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but I need it uh, for now to... Uh, let's see. So the cool thing is, another cool thing I'm going to show you right away is that uh, the code that I'll be showing here and I'll be using here and everything, it's, uh, it's, it's on GitHub open uh, for everyone. So you, at, after, at, at the end, I'll show you the link. You can go and clone it and download it and uh, play around with it as much as you want. And the important thing here is that I have a wiki dot, uh, markdown uh, on, on, at the root that actually talks about all those things, like we're talking about fault tolerance, talking about health, and you know, all these kind of things. Um, as a, uh, it's IntelliJ bug, I need to do this, yes. So there is a, a, a little bit strange bug that uh, makes, sometimes does not render markdown files uh, because they're struggling with some, some kind of chromium something issue. I talked to, to, to to, to the guys behind it, uh, they they know it's this, they know it's this, it's a thing, and they struggle with it. Uh, they'll fix it eventually, I guess. Um, but uh, speaking of being a very very geek, 
I did create an architecture for my microservice uh, stuff. And obviously, I created that in, as, as an ASCII. So it's actually text. Uh, so <laughs> if you open it in, uh, in a browser and you have a little bit weird uh, resolution, it might not look good. That's the downside. The, the, the upside is that it, it's very geeky. I guess that's an upside. So, you know, it, it actually, this one is smart. This one actually is not doing the line breaks. Anyway, so the setup. What I'll be showing, a lot of the things I'll be showing you is that you have a, um, a front-end microservice, right? So it's, it's a web service that is using, that is kind of, is in a front-end, which is, well, not front-end as you think. It's not HTML, but front-end. And there is a back-end service, like back-office service that it will be calling, right? And there is something in there that you ignore for now. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but think of those, those two things, right? And then I have a two endpoints on service A called uh, high and feature. Uh, on the back end, I, have, I still kept a high and feature just because. But on the back end, I also have a message and a backup message, the ones that we saw, right? So whenever you go to high, it will actually call a message if it fails it will go over to message backup. And um, the way we do that, we need to, so this is, no matter how many times I refresh this thing, it will just keep on saying hi there or hello there, right? But that's because um, we need to do some magic. I'll explain that part. Don't think about it for now. Um, but um, let me see. Where's my code? Here it is. I need. I need to create feature. Oh, it's really annoying. Uh, I'll resize it back. So feature, and then I do another one. No, not right now. New feature toggle called chaos. Right. So, um, so feature and chaos are uh, switches, and I can turn on a chaos feature which basically will start make that code to fail or force that code to fail at some point. So now, if I keep refreshing, see it failed, failed over, and it said, hello there, so this is right one, right one, oh, it failed, so it goes to backup. And then the right one, failed, right, fail, no, right, failed, and it just randomly will keep doing that. And the way that happens is, where's my code? There. The way that happens is this thing right here, right here. So we do a message or a backup message, and depending on which, uh, what endpoint fails, it will actually uh, return uh, the right implementation. And the way I do that, I have W back backend, uh, WS backend, and WS come on, there you go. Uh, WS client and WS backend. So client calls on the backend, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So if you see uh, where this piece of code is, it is inside a service, and it keeps on calling that stuff from backend service, right? Um, the way I did this as well is also to, yeah, let's not talk about that. Uh, there is some stuff with Docker, not Docker, and port numbers and all that. Uh, I actually need to, to call the port numbers inside the network and not outside the network. But yeah, no, let's not go there. Um, I'll explain that if, if you want later. It's more of uh, Docker Compose and Docker Container kind of magic uh, stuff. And on the reason we needed to do that on uh, source, 
drama demo app. So the reason we wanted to um, create a chaos variable is that I have a little switch here that says, you know, if chaos is on, just think of it as just a true false variable for now. I'll explain all that, whatever that means later. But if chaos is on, you do that stuff. If it's not, then you just always say it's, it's success. It's kind of a feature flag. Yes, it's a feature flag. It's exactly what it is, and, and that's a spoiler for later. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. But the cool thing is that you didn't really have to do anything else but um, but um, creating a path, saying it's a get method, not post and not anything else, and telling what it produces. So it produces uh, plain uh, text, plain text. And uh, in addition to that, you had to create, um, there you go. You had to create uh, fallback. So that add fallback, that's all you needed to do really to tell it to, to fall back to something else. If I remove that thing, it will just give me a, a 500. Now you're not getting 500 at all. You're always getting a response. So that's a cool thing, and that's it sounds very obvious, but in a lot of a lot of a lot of enterprise applications, they kind of forget about that because people always think about sunny like um, sunny day kind of happy day scenario. Yes. Can you configure that fallback, for example, for summer or sunny, or I suppose it's it's based on HTTP error code. Or yes. Yeah. So it's it's. Um, the whole specification for for micro profile is um, is 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 is. Let me find the right s page. So the whole uh, spec spec is down there, very very large font. Um, but basically, uh, just search for fault tolerance micro profile and make sure that you find the right version, latest version, uh, because they have a bunch of them uh, and. Uh, that's that's the thing. Uh, that's where it's specified how it reacts and what it reacts and everything. But basically, it, it does like if it is uh, if it's two hundred, all good. If it's not, actually, now I really want to uh, click on this and actually see if they can do. Uh, let's say just for four hundred. Yeah, I wanna I wanna let's see full back. Fallback. Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, fallback met specify fallback had a class. Yeah, but that's class. That's what you want to do. So you can use built-in or not. But criteria for triggering. That's the fun part. Yeah, there you go. So you can do a bunch of things here. Uh, yeah, it's actually I answered your question as well. So it, you can basically filter based on different exceptions. Ah, there you go. It's um, sometimes it's not as, I mean, well, always, it's always scary to click on things and do things live, but sometimes it's actually not that bad as you might think. Uh, so that's a good thing. Okay. Um, let's go to number the, the, the point number two. The other thing is, so now we talked about what happens if things go wrong, right? Uh, let's talk about uh, trying to figure out if things are going wrong or not, like things called health. So you want to check how your application is, if your application is healthy. And most of the things you want to do with all that, all of the, most of the things I'm going to be mentioning, you really want to do it programmatically. And there are tools for that, right? For things like I'm going to be mentioning later, there are tools uh, like uh, Prometheus. For this, it's probably something built in in Kubernetes that will ping and check. And if not, if it's not application is not healthy, it will kind of kill the container and spin up a new one and all that. So of course you can use it manually as well, but this is actually made for both really, for machine readable and human readable kind of thing, at least this. I mean, if you really, really want to see application health and read it manually, be my guest. If you have many applications, maybe you might get busy, but well, you know. So. Um, you want to see what's happening inside your application because 
Why is that thing important and why do we want to separate them? So we have three, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really bad and, uh, at, at puns. I can't help myself. So I ended up with what's up, up. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just I, like, you know, it, damn if you do and damn if you don't, but you know, I ended up doing it. Um, <coughs> but um, you really want to know uh, several things. So you want to know if your container is up. Uh, and you want to know if your application is up. And you want to know how it's doing and all this. So because, you know, when, when things are uh, being automatically spun up by Kubernetes or whatever, you, there's a lot of things that's happening, right? The request comes in, uh, Kubernetes doesn't know what to do with it or when you build, well, if it's, it's even more visible if you think serverless when you don't even have a container to respond to it yet, right? First request, cold start for a serverless application. A request comes in, something, whatever it's running, serverless application, whatever on top of Kubernetes and all that, needs to figure out, okay, this request comes in, what to do with it? Oh yeah, I, I need to serve it to that service. Okay, do I have this service? No. Okay, I have to go to container registry, grab the container, stream it back to whatever where I'm gonna deploy it. Then I have to start starting that container. So I have to start booting that container up. Then I need to boot up the whatever operating system-ish thing, whatever la layer you have in a container. On top of that, you need to start booting the application that's inside your container. And then you need to be able to actually start to tell the Kubernetes, whatever, uh, Knative, anything else you're running, serverless, anything, to tell, hey, I'm ready and then it will start serving requests to you, right? So URL comes in, bunch of things happens, at some point it says, hey, I'm ready, then it connects to you, you get an answer and you get that. It all happens in milliseconds, you don't think about it, but it still happens, and for that you need health. And the way you do that is you have uh, several probes, so they basically call them probes, and there are probes like uh, a red, uh, so startup uh, probe, make, make, making sure that you've actually started up and, 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 and uh, you know, things are up. Uh, readiness is, are you actually ready to serve stuff? And liveness is, well, it is what it is, right? Are you alive? Uh, are you actually ready to not, not ready, but are you still alive, basically? Think of it like this, right? So it can be, for example, uh, if, you're if your application depends on a bunch of uh, database connections and database connections die, you can ping liveness and s inside liveness you can actually check for those connections or something like that, right? Again, it's a part of micro profile, but similar things you will be able to find in other uh, frameworks as well. Specification is also very clearly stated at the bottom, bottom there, very, very big font. I'm a very big fan of that. Uh, but at least you have a, something for later. Um, yeah, and yeah, ooh, yeah, okay, let's do this. Uh, so live demo. Uh, we have, and the cool thing is you don't really have to do anything except for implementing those uh, probes. And when you've done that, it just magically appears at slash health. Look at this. Uh, so I created a bunch of uh, different ones. So I have um, two liveness, one readiness, and one startup. Uh, some of them are very, very complicated, and some of them are um, uh, less complicated. The way, uh, let's see, code, tells J, um, right. I'm going to go the same way I really want you to go through this because then you have all the links and everything. And the beautiful thing is, beauty of this is that this is actually links leading into the code base and that will work on GitHub as well. Uh, so <coughs> you can have a look at the health package and then there are like a bunch of different uh, things. So simple health check, well, it's very simple. So it basically always return up. It will never do anything else. It will just say always happy. Um, so that is not that fun, but this is fun. Uh, so here, I actually do a little bit more advanced thing. I mean, it's not very advanced, but still a little bit more advanced. 
I do uh, <clears throat> the way the, what I do is that I basically time request and if if request ta takes less than three seconds I say it's all good if request takes less than three seconds I say well something is bad something is wrong and the way I do that I just take a timer and the way I make sure it will fail I'll show you later that was the other uh, that was the other feature called uh, chaos uh, yeah we'll go we'll get there um, but the cool thing is that if we turn on so there is um there is something called delay I, I keep on deleting containers so you know feature flags keep disappearing uh, but if you keep your containers and don't delete them uh, you will still have them so you're uh, you're you're good and you can actually see if they've been used lately and stuff I'll explain all this in a second but for now just think again of it as a flip as a switch and where is my Firefox? I turned on the, oh yeah, that's right, thanks. I need to turn on delay and I need to, yeah, I don't need the feature thing, but I mean, it's, it's more fun. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's, um, yeah, I'll explain feature in a bit. Uh, okay. Um, if we go, if we check out the health, you see that will go a bit longer for roughly, I think I put in five seconds. So you see there is no response. It's actually still loading. Uh, and when it did, we're down. So one of those things are down. Uh, and that's because it did take long, longer than three seconds delay. And if I, just to show you that there is no, no black magic in here, just like regular magic, uh, is that if I, yeah, okay, I was too quick. It, did I did I flip the wrong one? Yes, I did. Thank you. Told you I'm in, in vacation mode. Uh, okay, come on, come on. So it takes usually around a few seconds, like uh, maybe ten or five five to ten seconds to to propagate all the changes. So now it's up. Yeah. So now I can refresh it as much as I want and it will be always up because I removed the delay thing. Uh, the way I did that again, I just put in sleep and sleep for five seconds. That's all. Uh, the implementation of all those things is kind of uh, quite fun, but it's, it's not very, it's not rocket science really. Uh, it's basically uh, doing some stuff and responsi responding dot down or dot up and then you can actually add a, a, an error message that you want so for example for this one it actually creates says critical service blah blah is too slow <coughs> and that's what happens if we do this and this and see it's already propagated so it's already sleeping there it is and uh, now it says the message that you saw there the the cool thing is that again all you have to do is basically say uh, to implement the right uh, method and say it's at liveness and it's application scoped and then you basically implement the class that's all I do a lot of uh, things with config properties because I was lazy and I didn't want to put in the hard code URLs it kind of feels wrong you feel dirty so I ended up uh, doing config instead and we'll talk a bit more about config if we have time uh, but uh, that's another that's another feature that uh, you can use if you want to or you should really don't even think about hard coding things into your code. Again, I've seen it way too many times, even though it sounds obvious. I've seen it so many times that I kind of still have to say it. On large, large, large enterprise applications. Right. Um, so health. So far, so good? Good. 
Number three, metrics. Um, so now that you know that your application is up and running, it, it knows what to behave and how to behave and what to do. Um, you want to create some custom metrics and expose that to, to the platform that you're running on, right? Because that's what I was uh, mentioning earlier, is that if you're, uh, for example, using something like Prometheus or something, it will expose metrics to, uh, through that. Technically, it's human readable as well. I'll show you in a second. But it's, it's more machine useful for machines than for humans. I mean... Look at this. I'm going to show you that first, and then I'll talk about that. Uh, metrics. Yeah. I mean, it is human re readable, right? It's a wall of text, but it's readable. And um, uh, since we're here, this is my, so my uh, 9081, as you can see, if you can see it on top there, 9081, that's my front end service, and 82 is my back end service. So if I go on this one to um, metrics, it's going to look a little bit, a little bit different. And the important thing here is that I've created two custom metrics here, counting uh, total number of calls to high message and how many times it has failed. So you know, if we just go in here to front end high. Oh, I, oh, come on. I forgot to do this. Yep. So the high thing, uh, it's been called one more time. So we're at 78, so it should be at 79. No, it's at 81. Okay. It actually been called a few times. Okay. One more time. One re refresh. Yeah, okay, so it works. So it wasn't really updated. So one more, see, it kind of keeps adding. But if I refresh it, just nothing happens. Uh, okay, so this is custom metrics that you can create. And the way you do that, you, um, yeah, I told you why, right? You wanna do custom properties, parameters, specific to your application, but still expose it. Because it can be, for example, because you want to scale based on some kind of custom things, or you wanna, expose how many times something failed without really um, uh, making it visible for user or whatever. The way you do that, add counted, that's all. So you do add counted, you s give it a name, and you give it the tag, and that's it. And you can actually do the same uh, name, different tags for different uh, services, and it will still manage to separate them. That's what I'm doing here. So I'm having the same name. It's called uh, uh, mess, uh, service uh, total, uh, service total counter, and but I still have two different tags called purpose. One is failover, and the other one is total. Uh, so if everything fails, it will still increase this one, but it will also increase the the, the, the this one as well. Um, and you can do a bunch of things. You can do like absolute values, non-absolute, you know, all, 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 all the fun things. If you want to understand and know what it is, you can go into the specs again and have a read and have a, have a look there as well. Okay. Mm. Show you that thing in the code. Uh, there. Again, we can do it, uh, let's do it the easy way. So you do remember that, Viki metrics, well, this one. So you can have a look here and you will see counted. So that's, that's the way you really do that. So you add, add counted, that's all. You can add more information about it and description and summaries and stuff. That's, that's really nice, but you don't really have to do it. That's all you have to do is just to say custom messaging service, purpose failover and purpose uh, total. And that's it, really. Um, what the way it will look like this, it's like custom messaging service and that's, that's, that's what you will get, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it's, it's like microservices. It's, it's, uh, it's stateless, so it's, it will start from zero. So if you want to do something about it, that's the thing. So you collect those metrics. You do like, uh, and that's why you want to maybe you want to do like absolute and non-absolute values or whatever. And then you can collect them with Prometheus or something else, logging, whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I showed you quite a lot of, so that's the actual, all you've seen so far was the spoiler, uh, spoiler alert for feature toggling. And that is, um, the thing that is not microprofile or Jakarta E connected at all, but it is um, it is basically an idea that you need to make some features available at some point, and you don't want to, to have them available all the time or for everyone. Or uh, you know, it's it can be many reasons for why you want to do that. First of all, you just want to turn on and off features for everyone. You have something, you just you know, like I like we did here. We added delays, we added like some crazy stuff and all this. Uh, otherwise, you might want to do it because you want to do gradual releases. You just deploy an application, but you don't want to make it available for everyone. You might want to make it available for 5% um, of your users, 10%, 50%, whatever. Uh, or you can do focus groups. You know, everybody in Canada gets something about maple syrup. I don't know, uh, Canadian flag. Uh, but. Um, Everybody in Norway gets something else. Um, picture of a moose. No, that works and doesn't work. Like, yeah, okay. I guess that's the thing that we have in common. Uh, <coughs> but you know, uh, <laughs> you get the point, right? Uh, you want to do like based on IPs or location or uh, just A/B testing, whatever, right? Um, Another thing is that's very useful is partially implemented features. So imagine that you've implemented already data for a front end, back end is not ready, you just add a feature tag, uh, toggle. So you turn it off on the back end and you can still deploy it. But uh, you, 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 you don't turn it on until the back end stuff is deployed and uh, rolled out. And then you can turn it on and it will just work. Otherwise you have to kind of remove it from the code base and all that and it kind of sucks. Uh, <coughs> so you don't want to do that. Um, there is only one thing. I mean, if you're going to do that and if you're going to add feature toggles, you have to promise me one thing. So at this point, we get up and put, no. Uh, but, you know, you re but I seriously, I mean it. You really promise me one thing. You will remove them when you don't need them. Because those feature toggles, if you, they're not removed, they have a, a tendency of becoming like a holy thing that nobody dares to touch. You know, you don't want to do that. So after some time, you know, it's just like nobody there, we're like, what is that feature? We don't know. Uh, what is it? No, we don't touch it. Two people tried to remove it, they got fired for that. So, you know, don't do that. You don't want to be one of those. Um, right. So um, why really or how or kind of why? Because I did a talk, uh, one of this, I talked about this in, in a, at a conference, and people like, can we just add like if some ifs and stuff and elses and things and just be done with it? Sure. How many ifs is, do you want? <laughs> uh, what's a plural of if? Ifs, uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> how many of them do you want? How many elses do you want? Or how do you kind of you know handle all, all that? You can put in a config file. Yeah, sure, you can. Do you really want to restart your application every time you change a value? Eh. You want to use a tool. And there are many tools. And the one of the tools that I'm using is just for uh, no reason at all. Well, there is a reason. So one reason is that it is, um, uh, it's open source. So you can just basically do a git pull. And so that's what I'm doing here, actually. Uh, I'll show you. So, um, so you j basically do git. If you look at my history, it's probably, I mean, it's like showing your history from command line. It's always a horror show. And it's being recorded as well, so it's going to be fun. Um, can I do, can I do, uh, what's that, wait, come on. Uh, no, it doesn't, didn't work. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, no, that was bad. Head, yes, thank you. That's the, yes. Thank you. Uh, history. Is it tail or head? Which one it's? I want a tail. Yes, exactly. Ha! Huh. 
Okay, it's not that, okay, th this point, <laughs> that, that was safe. <laughs> See, I mean, I have brew, so I keep on updating it, so that's fine. Uh, but basically what I do is that I do git pull, and I do docker compose up. And then I forgot the minus dash D, and it was kind of all in command line, and I killed it, and I started with dash D. But that's all I have to do, right? So it's, it's really nice. Uh, but there is also cloud version, so how they get paid. And the, the reason number two is that these people are, this is a kind of a startup that was spin off from another company and they're in Norwegian. So I thought like, you know, why not? But there are many other versions. There are many other tools. I don't care what you want to use. I'm not going to sell you any of those things. I mean, all of the things I'm tell, showing you are purposefully open source and available for everyone. So it's like n no licenses or anything. But, um, Whatever you use, it's going to be the same thing or similar things, and you can do things. So the, what you saw here, really, the user interface here, it's, it's on leash. Uh, and uh, you just create features like I did, like in a second, and then you can flip them on for development and production and all that. And the way you, uh, if you host it yourself, you need to do some magic with, uh, you know, um, um, uh, certificates and stuff. Because here I'm actually running, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm running HTTP. Yeah, I do. Uh, so yeah, there is no lock there. So you know, like, okay, it's fine. It's running on my local cluster uh, on this machine. But if you want to put it on the cloud, don't do that. Yet another thing you're not supposed to do, uh, go HTTPS if you can. If you can't, don't go anywhere. Uh, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so the point is that you should be able to um, turn on your features really fast and easy, and you should be able to uh, to do that. And normally, the way you, what you would would like to expect is that you flip it on in the U UI is the way the way we saw it. It looks a bit different. This UI, they move the button a bit to the side, um, but inside the code. It is, uh, wait a second, no, 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 project. Um, where's my wiki? Um, it is. So front end. Um, what I do here, so the, I have a very, very, very uh, obvious, like very developer relatable kind of thing. It's, it's, a, it's a question if it's a feature or a bug. And of course, if, if, if Unleash is enabled and it says it is a feature, it will tell you it's a feature. If not, it will just tell you it's a bug. Um, so, um, feature, see it's a bug. And then we go in here, you will flip it, and magically it will become a, come on, there, it's a feature. I can zoom in. So you see, it's a feature now. Now this is how you remove bugs, people. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so um, see, I told you things you're not supposed to do and things you're supposed to do. This is how you kill bugs. Uh, <coughs> no. Can I ask a question? Of course. So Unleash and OpenShift is kind of no, uh, no, no. I, I, I don't know if open if if uh, if no. Uh, so, OpenShift is think of it as a platform to run stuff, and it can be hybrid or not hybrid, or uh, you know, uh, or just cloud or whatever. It's mostly. Mostly it's Kubernetes with some more stuff added on top of it. I mean, I'm not a Red Hat person, so probably if they're Red Hat people, they might kill me for saying that or not, and they might have a more official version. But since I'm not connected to them, I can, I can say that. <laughs> uh, but, and we're in kind of an IBM office, so. Uh, <clears throat> Do you have a better version of what OpenShift is? Red Hat, <laughs> IBM. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Yeah, so it's basically, uh, it's think of it as a Kubernetes, but it's also, the cool thing is that they do, 
uh, also provide like do hybrid so they can do cloud and on site and you know you can mix and match and this kind of stuff and 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 uh, this is just feature toggles it just turns things off and off it's just oh like right. a it's just a like a light like light switch it is open source so if you just go to uh, github unleash there you go here um <coughs> So basically what, what I did was just to go to that URL or well, that URL and clone it. And I did something that, again, something you're not supposed to do, but I just really wanted to do it. So right before the talk, while I was standing here, I did git pull. I downloaded a new version and build it. And it just, yeah. somehow it runs. I was, I was still, I was a surprise myself. <laughs> yes. Can the like, feature toggle and the like, fallback version be combined? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. I mean, you can. I mean, you can. So this is basically a true-false. Think of it as a true-false thing, but you can control when it's, on, when it's true or when it's off, uh, false. So it can be based on whatever, geographical or whatever that might be. But yeah, uh, it's, you can combine it, of course, yeah. With, with, the, like, with the first version of the format, if, like, if the feature, like, you turn on the feature, and it fails, then go to back, go to back on it. Yeah, but that's called circuit breaker. You don't need uh, feature toggles for that. So there is a, um, uh, go back, that's a circuit breaker. Oh, not clicking on that. Uh, circuit breaker, that's the one you want. Because it tr will keep trying and if it doesn't make it through so many times, it will just break the circuit and go into something else. Uh, and then uh, you have also uh, retry, so you can also define number of retries or how or whatever, and then you have the timeouts, and you know, so you want to, you can stay there. You don't don't go into features. Uh, yeah. So basically, unleash is just standalone application which yeah. is storing all of it. Yeah. So if you if you Google or search for anything that is like feature toggle software, there will be a bunch of them. It's just one of them because I needed something that I can run. It's just random. Technically, it's. <laughs> almost a random example, right? So it could have been anything else. There are a bunch of, there are open source and paid and non-paid and whatever. They provide a pro cloud version as well, so you don't have to think about anything, but uh, if you want to run it yourself, that's, I think most of the features are available. It's just a tiny little bit that is not, that's commercial, but yeah. Uh, but the whole thing is open source. And um, uh, what I wanted to, yeah, okay. So I wanted to show you the code uh, so this is this is how you do it, right? You do unleash is enable, and you provide a name of the feature, and it will always return you true or false. But the way you define that uh, object is basically this. So you do you point to a, a URL of your uh, of your unleash API. Uh, you give an instance ID, you give your app name, and all this, and then you uh, you uh, you do the API key, which mine is very very super secure. It actually says there is a, I mean, no 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 no. There is a secure word in it, so it must be secure. We ignore the first part, and yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's yeah ex ex yeah it's it's. Uh, but <laughs> no, but I mean, the point is like, if you're running it all in your own cluster and it's closed, you can do things like that. This is a demo application in production. I would never, ever, ever, ever do that. And no, but seriously, I mean it, don't do that. Uh, but you know, otherwise, yeah, it's, and also change your password for the, uh, for, 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 uh, for the application here. And if you look at um, repository, my repository, that one, that's the code that I've been showing you. It actually even says the username and password in clear text here because it's just default one. Unleash, yeah, there it is. So default credentials, so you know, this is just the default installation. I didn't change anything. I just pulled it and I started it. But you want to do that production ready if you want to. This is this is this is username and password from their docs. It's not. Uh, it's nothing like 
super secret. Right. OK, so we're good with uh, feature toggles. You remember what you promised me, right? All of you? You will delete, kill the features that you don't need to? Yeah, good. Um, <coughs> right. Um, let's go back here. Yeah, so we talked about this. Um, Last thing is a bit of a mixed basket of things, and I'm almost done, so I'm almost, uh, almost, almost on time. Um, eventual consistency is another thing that we developers strive for. So <coughs> eventually we'll be done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, um, another thing that you promise, have to promise me to do is that when you do all this kind of stuff and you, when you deploy things to uh, clouds, serverless, whatever, your own applications. Uh, there will be at some point uh, times when you want to do it like I did. Just go into user interface, like here, do stuff, click on some things and just create some things and just it works, right? Um, that's another thing that you really have to promise me not to. So Click ops is a very bad thing. You should have infrastructure as code or whatever as code uh, because it's not documented. It's never documented. If I uh, forget how to add a feature, if they change the way to add new features here, I'll be struggling. And I was like, huh, what was it called again? What, what it did? What happened? Uh, and it really is not good in, in a big scale, right? If somebody quits or gets sick or something and somebody has to replace them, for some time, they will be like, yeah, okay, what, how do you, oh yeah, you have to log into this URL, type in that password, do this, eh, it doesn't work like that. So, don't do click ops, try to create it uh, as infrastructure, as code, and, uh, you know, all the setup as code as well. Why? Uh, well, because it's reproducible, you can actually do it over and over again, and it will get the same results, and not, does not re rely on your memory. Uh, it's documented because people know exactly what features have been turned on and off. We have a huge Kubernetes cluster at a place uh, I'm working where we have like enormous, super ginormous Kubernetes cluster for many, 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 many really many nodes. And uh, we need to upgrade it. We don't know the exact settings of it. Like you can dump it through APIs and stuff, but we don't know how exactly it was set up because it was clicked click, 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 next, you know, wizard. Um, and it's, it sucks. It's, it's not easy to create a new environment or whatever. So um, if, it's, if it's infrastructure as code or automated, it's documented. And well, obviously, it's if it's automated, it is automated. Water is wet and earth is round and all this. Well, almost round is technically, it's not, well, not let's not go there. Uh, <coughs> it's round-ish. Um, it's a bit squeezed. Uh, <coughs> but um, the downside is that it, is, it needs to be maintained. So you really need to actually keep changing things because it's not really, you remember the, uh, the, this logon of Java? Yes, exactly. Red ones run everywhere. Um, this is not like this. This is write it once, maintain it forever. But, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it will pay off, believe me. <laughs> I mean, it's, you can still run it everywhere, but you just need to, things will break because, you know, new versions, new products, new things, and things like that, right? Um, so there are things like um, um, infrastructure as code things. So there are like a bunch of them. There are Terraform, there are Pulumi, there are um, uh, Open Tofu all the other edible things, uh, but um, doesn't matter. Pick one, pick something, stick to it. Uh, bash scripts, if you're that way inclined, I don't know, I don't judge. Uh, but have something. Um, another thing is that microprofile config, so that's more of configuration things. Uh, there are some examples in the code, I barely showed you that, I'm not gonna show it, but you can search for it and have a look. 
the way you want to do, the, the reason you want to do config is that your environments will look different, right? You have a production and testing and staging and development and all that, and they will all have different URLs, and you really don't want to put them in manually everywhere. You can actually create different configuration files and just put them while as you build them inside your CI CD uh, pipelines. Right. Um, and uh, when you choose your infrastructure to run things on, <sighs> okay, there's a lot of things you have to promise me now. So one of them is that you don't pick Kubernetes just because, right? Like everybody else is doing that. Microsoft is doing that. Google is doing that. Well, my little startup of one person and three users have to go with Kubernetes. No, nah, not necessarily. So. You really need to think about what your infrastructure, you, where you, what level of infrastructure uh, kind of complexity you want to go. You want to go infrastructure as a service. You want to go platform as a service. You want to go uh, like serverless. You want to go uh, VMs. Sometimes you have to go VMs. That's what we used to do a long time ago. Sometimes you still have to do it. There are reasons, like you know, special hardware, special whatever, special software requirements, have special anything. Uh, serverless, that's probably mostly a good thing for a lot of the people, but not always because pricing can be a challenge because they, the, the cloud people, they're not stupid. They give you serverless, but if you have something that's being used all the time, maybe the pricing will be different depending on like, you know, if you want to have a lot of users, a lot of um, pressure on your applications, maybe Kubernetes is a good thing. Tiny little application for you, your dog and your family. Uh, probably serverless might be a good idea. You don't need like three node application. Be believe me, I did that. Uh, it costed like 150 bucks a month. It had been running for like three months until we realized that. And it was just like running and s s quietly pulling money from the credit cards. It's really nice. Um, <coughs> but you know, there was zero usage. I mean, there was usage for a week or like uh, three days, the rest of those three months, 150 bucks out of the window. Uh, so, you know, because, you know, because with Kubernetes, you really need to have VMs that are running all the time and that costs and, you know. Yeah, the, the, uh, most of the credit cards are made out of plastic and they melt uh, because sometimes things get really, really warm. Um, <clears throat> and then you get an email from your boss. Uh, <laughs> no, it, that didn't happen. So, you know, um, but it did, it did cost us 150 bucks a month. It did, but everything went well. Everything was fine. We had some credits to throw at it. <laughs> um, right, so demo time. Well, we did demo already, so I'm not gonna do another demo time, but this is what we have been seeing, right? So we had two different services. We had a front-end service, back-end service. A uh, bunch of endpoints, uh, so two for front-end service, uh, four for back-end service, with a bunch of others that are extra, like you know health and metrics and all that, but that kind of came in um, uh, in addition. And then uh, um, we had a feature toggling service that actually had the toggles, like uh, feature and chaos, and also it had delay. I didn't put it there. Right, so um, the source code that I promised, it's here. There is actually a trick. If you don't want to write down, I mean, you can take a picture of that. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can do, you can go to this uh, website. So I, I was bored one day and I created it. Um, just, I was bored. Uh, <coughs> So it's a bunch of links that like all the social media and everything. So if you want to find me on whatever social media you want to, you prefer, I'm there. Uh, LinkedIn, yeah, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn as well. I didn't put it in here, but yeah, you will find me there as well. Uh, if, uh, yeah, and but the thing is GitHub. So this is the one that you want to go right now. If you go there, uh, you'll see uh, five features. Where is it? It's probably in repositories. Um, yeah, five features talk demo. So that's the one. And this is the code that you have been seeing. This is the thing that I've been showing you. And if there is anything, well, always there's always a chance to send a pull request. Uh, I think it should work now. 
uh, but you know, if there is anything. And apart from that, I mean, um, yeah, so this is me on Twitter and all the other social medias are uh, on that link. And there is also another very, very old fashioned, extremely old fashioned um, social media, it's called email. Uh, if you need that, just come and say hi and I'll, I'll send you that as well. Uh, I'll give you that as well. Uh, but yeah, so technically it's social media, right? You can send private messages to everyone that are not very private because it was implemented. That, well, again, let's not go there. Anyway, um, that's it.